This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome. This is Craig Thomas, your host on Much More on Medicine, part of Think Tech Hawaii's live stream series, uh, and as usual, assisted by Ray and Rich, our engineers. And today, I would like to welcome Stephanie Violetti. She is Senior VP of uh, HMSA's uh, Member Operations. Uh, brought to the new position for Stephanie. Congratulations and welcome. Thank you, Craig. Um, happy to be here. Thanks for having me on the show. It's my pleasure. Uh, we've known each other a fair while now, and in fact, our uh, spheres, or should we say areas, as in geographic, uh, of effort uh, overlap for a lot longer than that. Um, Stephanie, until last fall, was the uh, CEO at Kahuku. And we provide emergency department and inpatient services there, so we got to know each other pretty well. Yes. And I'm thrilled you're in your new role because I think that uh, the challenges and good things that we share in across the state, and Kahuku is a very, in many ways, representative slice of the state, uh, apply everywhere. Yes, definitely. And um, yes, it's it's been an exciting couple of months. Uh, my transition from um, Kahuku Medical Center to HS, HMSA in October of last year. Um, so being on the provider side for the past 19 years and being able to transition over to the payer side and um, being able to see things from kind of a, a little bit of a different perspective, but uh, definitely striving for the same goals in regards to um, a healthier Hawaii. That's one of the things I've always liked about you, striving for a healthier Hawaii, because if that's not what we're trying to accomplish, what are we doing? Exactly. So, over the course of the spring, we've talked about issues of how much care is the right amount, where it should be delivered, how people get from one place to another, where it should be done, uh, the harms of doing too much, and the importance of standardizing care pathways so that we all get the right amount of care and the right care, uh, no matter where we are. Today we're switching gears a little bit. Those things are all important and we can certainly talk about them because HMSA has a big role in helping coordinate standardized and standardized care across the state. But I really like what your focus has been the last several years, uh, the Blue Zones Initiative and the fact that if I'm going to stay healthy, I better not eat too much, I better exercise, I better do things that uh, contribute to my happiness and the people around me, and that will improve my health. Yes. So we've, um, and I'm sure you know, some, some people have heard of uh, our strategy, Mahie 2020, and I, I think our slide one um, shows what we're striving for and really being able to keep the member at the um, center of all that we do um, and our focus. So really trying to switch uh, being a uh, health plan, which was established by uh, social workers and teachers back uh, in 1938, a long time ago. Uh, so making that shift from being a health plan to um, a health organization mm -hmm. and uh, really being able to focus on the member and all as aspects of well-being. So uh, that's what Mahi 2020 is focusing on, uh, being able to create uh, more partnerships, collaborations, um, in helping members achieve being the healthiest that they can be. You know, I think that's fabulous. We, uh, so when I started doing emergency medicine, God help us, 35 years ago this year at Wahiwa, so near Kahuku, um, we were doctors. And people came to us, we took care of them, they went away. Sometimes they came back. <laughs> but I've come to recognize over time that my impact on health that way is very real, but can have a much bigger impact on health by working it how to change things. So we got involved in drunk driving legislation and are very supportive of your efforts in exercise. And soon we're going to be talking uh, next week probably about uh, drowning. Uh, these things all are the premise of if you can prevent a problem, and whether it's drowning, a car crash, uh, diabetes, uh, it's much better than trying to treat a problem. Definitely. So Blue Zones uh, was founded a couple of years ago, I think 2000 and 
15, and um, really focusing on helping communities improve their health. So working with uh, employers, organizations within the community, uh, establishing moyais, um, you know, for, for walking, uh, for eating, for gathering, really focusing on being proactive and um, versus addressing issues when people are sick. We, we definitely have, continue to do that, but really making that shift to be, provide um, healthier options uh, for people within their own communities. Exactly, and uh, really hats off to HMSA for doing this, and hopefully providers across the state, and I know some are, there are doctors leading uh, community walks, for example. I know this is happening in Hilo. Yeah. I think it's likely happening, I hope, across the state. <laughs> good for us to walk, and it's good to uh, share both the exercise and the community with everyone else. Yeah. Because health is complex. It requires exercise, it requires social connection, it, you have to eat more or less the right things, a weakness of mind. Uh, and as long as we are focused on disease treatment, we are missing that boat. Definitely. Even within HMSA, I mean, I always, you know, these conversations, I always try and relate it back to, to me. You know, what am I doing in regards to my overall well-being? And, you know, I have to think twice. Do I want to take the stairs, you know, versus the elevator? And the stairs is right next to the elevator, so it makes it really easy. But being but more you're conscious... you're on the 11th floor. I right, think. so that's a lot of stairs. Yeah. So, so being able to... Um, consciously and being intentional about um, my health mm -hmm. and so but being able to create those opportunities for people um, in some stores at Foodland they have aisles that offer healthier choices you know such as fresh fruit um, nuts you know versus your regular aisles that have a lot of all the sugar. my favorites. Yeah, all your favorites, mm -hmm. right. <laughs> all the addicting foods. Yes. Um, no, they are. Yes, they are. They're designed to be addicting. Yes. So being able to just create healthier options for people um, to, be a, to help them be more intentional regarding their choices. Exactly. Yes. And this actually brings to mind, I've been watching all sorts of dietary and other kinds of publications over the years and have decided... It's really pretty simple. Michael Pollan has the, the haiku that describes it. Let's see, what is it? Eat food, because that's, of course, one of the problems. It's not like you can't eat food. It's necessary. It's fuel. So eat food, mostly vegetables, not too much. Right. The other thing he said was uh, eat like your grandma ate. Because uh, the problem is when we buy that aisle, from that aisle you were discussing, the one that... Uh, is almost like crack. Right. Um, uh, it's engineered to be addictive, we'll eat too much, but it's also got lots of sugar, lots of salt, right. uh, lots of fat, lots of calories. Um, so it's not magic. It's just eat food, not too much, uh, mostly vegetables, and mimic your grandma. So there's just those little choices. And I think, you know, the Blue Zones initiative, um, you know, being able to create these support systems within your work environment, within your community, mm -hmm. because yes, they are, they are um, difficult decisions to make, right? I mean, and we have hundreds of them throughout the day. You know, do I want to eat that muffin or, you know, <laughs> should I eat the banana? Right. Yes, so, exactly. Right. And so being able to create more of the support systems within organizations, within the community, uh, within the healthcare system um, is really important. It is. And I think it starts one step at a time. You know what? I love coffee, which, thank God, so far no one's found anything bad about. Right. And it might even be good. Right. So I drink my coffee. I punted on the sugar a few years ago. Oh. So little decisions can help. You also touch on something else. Our network, our friends, the people around us impact how we do with these decisions all day long. There's some fascinating evidence that uh, if your partner gains weight, so do you. They don't even need to be in the same state. If somebody you are in contact with, uh, then you can be in contact with over Facebook, uh, gains weight, uh, your odds are you kind of might too. Yeah. So we're complicated. We're gullible uh, in the, uh, how should I say it? resolutions department and I think it takes a lot of different strategies and Blue Zones is one yeah. to uh, impact this. 
And honestly, it's the most important thing we can do for our health is to eat right, be more or less the right weight, and get regular exercise. Right. Doesn't need to be dramatic exercise. Definitely. Yeah. So just trying to figure out how to be able to, um, HMA is, you know, really this shift to focus on wellness um, and health versus, you know, disease management, which we know we still have to do. Okay. So a lot of areas of um, opportunity for us to, for continued collaboration and increase our partnerships. Um, those relationships are key to be able to um, help facilitate um, these choices and um, try and limit the fragmentation within the healthcare system. Well, it's interesting you should mention the fragmentation in the healthcare system. Uh, compared to the rest of the, the our, our peers in the world, uh, other countries, uh, U.S. has, I don't know, we've talked about this all spring, on average about double the cost, with very middle of the pack results. Uh, relevant to this conversation, uh, we're also on average fatter, and we don't move around too much. And I've not seen real analysis of our diet, which are probably pretty varied, but I'm sure salt and sugar are well featured. Unfortunately, that plague has spread almost everywhere. Uh, I was recently in Palau. Not a whole bunch of healthy choices in the local market. That's not quite fair. The local produce, fruits, was fabulous. Mm -hmm. Everything brought in from elsewhere, not so much. But the interesting difference between our health system and the rest of the world is related to what you just touched on. It's fragmentation and it's expense on the sort of business side, we call it the revenue cycle management, uh, but the business side, the, the charting, the coding, the billing, the getting the information from oh, a pulmonologi pulmonologist to the primary care provider and to the patient, we're terrible at that. And it also overall falls under the coordination of care heading. And although we have middle of the road results on outcomes, uh, and we actually are good at some things. Our rate of hospitalization is lower than many of our peer countries. Uh, our coordination of care is the bottom. And so I know you've been engaged in how to solve that. So are we as our group. And um, in fact, we have a little uh, partnership going on trying to figure out how to do it better. I'm honestly really excited about it. Yeah, we've, so we've, HMSA has um, implemented a care model, which is supporting our members who need the most help. So it's really personalized, high touch service um, to, to members who have, you know, um, maybe dual diagnosis, um, you know, different cancers, um, so we've implemented, uh, we, so we call it care model, where kind of these wraparound services mm -hmm. uh, for these members um, in trying to help them navigate the healthcare system. So that's a really interesting topic. We're gonna take a little break. Uh, this is Much More Medicine, your host Craig Thomas with guest Stephanie Bialetti, uh, Senior VP Member Operations of HMSA. That's a long title. Yeah. And we'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. You can be the greatest, you can be the best, you can be the King Kong banging on your chest. You can beat the world, you can beat the war, you could talk to that dog banging on his door. You can throw your hands up, you can beat the clock, you can move a mountain, you can break rocks, you can be a master, don't wait for luck, dedicate yourself and you can find yourself. Ted Rawson here, folks, your host on Where the Drone Leads, our weekly show at noon on Thursdays here on Think Tech, where we talk about drones, anything you to do about drones, drones, remotely piloted aircraft, unmanned air crystals, whatever you want to call them, emerging into Hawaii's economy, educational framework, and our public life. We talk about things associated with the use, the misuse, uh, technology, engineering, legislation, with the local experts as well as people from across the country. Please join us noon on Thursdays and catch the latest on what's taking place in the world of drones that might affect you. Welcome back. 
This is Craig Thomas, your host on Much More on Medicine. And my guest today is Stephanie Violetti, uh, senior member, senior VP. I'm going to get this right yet. Yes. Senior <laughs> Vice President, yes. Member Operations HMSA. And before the break, we were talking about the importance of all the elements of care in health. And as you can see from the slide, what we individually do is the biggest single element in our health. Clearly, there are other elements. And also, clearly, the healthcare system can help support our efforts, our individual efforts. I think that's crucial. However, some people do have health issues, and that's where the uh, organized portion of the healthcare system comes to play. And there are, there's a subset of patients who are very high utilizers, and they need special help. And one group you alluded to just before the break is what we call dual diagnosis. That means you got a couple problems. Usually they're related to some sort of substance ingestion and some sort of psychiatric diagnosis. However, those lead almost immediately to all sorts of real medical problems besides. Just demonstrating how our actions impact our health, because people with those two challenges generally don't have very healthy lifestyles. Yes, so, and very complex. Um, oh, yes. And I think our slide three, you know, just really um, highlights how complex healthcare is. And so being able to um, help, our, um, help our members navigate the system is really important to us. Um, you know, we call it fragmentation or gaps within the system. And I think healthcare just in general is just very complex. There's a lot of you know, rules and regulations. And every time we have a new administration, you know, it's, it's like whiplash trying to figure out you know, what we need to do on our end um, in order to meet those mandates. So um, being able to you know, uh, operationalize what those rules and regulations are and, and um, figure out how to continue to assist our members is, is an important piece. It's why I like your blue zone focus, yeah. because my perspective is a lot of the complexity in medicine is because we lost track of what the goal was. The goal is actually health. The goal is not delivery of health care. Right. Now, it's a key part, but it isn't actually the goal. And if you look at much of medicine, the confusion about the goal, namely, we're very good at delivering health care. We're very good at billing for it, we unbundle it, we list it, we do it. Let's not talk about that. Yes. Um, we're not so good at health. And over the years, we've gotten sidetracked by things that matter, but which still aren't the goals. So for example, patient privacy is a huge concern. The only way to have absolute patient privacy is to never share the information with anyone. You can't do healthcare that way. Right. Uh, if you, uh, I don't know, just got a prescription from your doctor and now you're in trouble in the ER, I need to know that. Um, so, and over the years, we put in lots of Band-Aids yes. to try and address these things. And it's a hobbled the whole system as um, your slide, <laughs> to my mind, dramatically generates. It's shocking how complicated it is. Oh, definitely. I mean, you know, if you go to multiple hospitals or uh, multiple physicians, they all might have, you know, different electronic medical records. No, they're not might have. They, they do. Would do. They do. They do. I'm sorry. Yes, they do. And so, you know, you have to log in to all these different accounts to access your patient portal if you want any of your medical records. And so sharing that information is, is very important. Yes. Um, so you can have um, continuity of care and yes. make sure that your um, health is being managed effectively. And so that is a big issue. And I know you're, um, there's, there's some awesome projects that are going on right now within the, um, within the United States on um, being able to help facilitate that process. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. It's my personal plug for the spring. Uh, there, there are no new problems under the sun. And the state of Washington about six years ago now looked at the frequent utilizers in emergency departments, many of them with dual diagnoses, and ultimately came up with something called EDIE, Emergency Department Information Exchange, and it's stupendous. I've been up there, I watched it in action. 
uh, and I really hope we get it here, it would solve a number of problems. And in essence, what happens is your health information sits in the cloud, and it has your diagnoses, your medications, your allergies, your previous interventions, and your current sort of health footsteps, shall we say. So you see your PCP, you see a specialist, you're at the emergency department at Kahuku, then later you end up at Castle, and if I'm taking care of you at Castle, I know those things. And then the next, your regular doctors, and the next place you need help, say you get worse, you end up downtown at one of the downtown tertiary facilities, um, they know it too. And this is, I imagine, many people assume, well, of course they know where I was and what I did. It'd be like, it'd be like your bank, our current system is kind of like having your branch bank not connected to any other branches. Right. Yeah. So every time you go into the bank, you say, well, you know, I do have a whole pot full of money in my account. And I say, no, that would never fly. And it's not working in medicine either. Very, very true. And, you know, so we have a new CEO, Mike, Mike Stoller. Congratulations. Yes. So he um, took over the helm in uh, January, mm -hmm. and he's been with HMSA over 30 years. And this is one of, you know, as part of the Mejia um, 2020 strategy, is really, you know, how do we connect the dots for our, our, our members as well as um, within the healthcare system? So even within HMSA, we're trying to figure, you know, some things out, how to provide that, you know, that 360, that complete view of, of the member. So um, to help streamline some of these processes so that we have the most accurate information of the member at that point in time. I think that's where we got to go. I sort of think of this, um, it's a variation on the 360. I think of it as a three-legged stool. There's you, there's us providers, and there are the facilities. And interestingly, each of them has their own piece. And until, well, I won't say that, currently the incentives for aligning the efforts are inadequate and the barriers to sharing data, for example, savings, uh, those kind of things aren't happening. Right. And it needs to. Yeah. And so I'm hopeful and, and it's human. We're all invested in our own world. We all think the others should play, but we're not so excited about sharing our stuff. But unless we break that down, we're going to struggle. Oh, completely agree with you. Um, I think that was one of the reasons why I um, came over to HMSA is because I truly believed in their mission and vision in being able to improve the lives of all of Hawaii. Um, and to get there is, um, is, uh, will take a lot of hard work because, as you said, we have to break down silos. You know, we have um, self-preservation issues, um, but really focusing on creating a win-win, um, which is Mike Stoller's goals as well, creating a win-win and, um, and increasing partnerships to be able to strive to create a healthier Hawaii is really, really what's important. I agree. The, one of the challenges in America is we're capitalists. And if you're making widgets, that's probably good. Yeah. Or even if you're making Honda Fits, my preferred vehicle. But uh, if your goal is improving health, that's much harder. Right. How do you measure that? How do you reward it? If your goal is, I don't know, doing a whole bunch of a procedure, and we could list a cabillion procedures. Knee arthroscopy doesn't usually work on old guys like me, but it's definitely a billable procedure. Uh, if you're, that capitalism works great for that, except for the fact maybe I shouldn't have had it in the first place. Uh, and the buzzword is payment transformation. It's essential and it's going to be tough. Yes. Um, crossing that great divide, yes, mm -hmm. is very challenging. Uh, we refer to it as the bridge strategy because one payment is in fee for service, one foot's there, and the other one is in payment, uh, payment transformation. Um, I think that, yeah, we're just trying to sort things out and figure out what works in order to, to make that great leap. Yes, and we're also going to, just like in other parts of, uh, shall we say, national debate, nostalgia for the past won't get us there. No. So there's great nostalgia for uh, Marcus Welby, the all-knowing 
uh, time for everybody, uh, family practitioner being sort of the portal and uh, kind of the gatekeeper. be all and end all right. and gatekeeper mm -hmm. for healthcare. Right. We still have great providers in the community, but the truth is the tools have changed dramatically. When I started, if you'd come to my ED uh, evenings or weekends and it looked like you had a stroke, we would have put you in bed. Next morning, they would have got the CAT scan. Right. Now, all sorts of things happen. Yeah. You get a CAT scan, you may get an MRI, you may get a CT angiogram, you, if qualify, will get a, a clot-breaking medicine, and if that doesn't work, you'll get shipped to a tertiary center, uh, there are only one or two places in the state that do this, to get the clot removed. It's better. It's an example of how things have changed. Right. And for acute or emergent conditions, uh, Marcus Welby is going to send you to the ER. Right. And so my sense is we should figure out how to facilitate that, but then also change the costs associated with that. Oh, the problem isn't the ER. The problem is the way we set up charge structures. So then we allocate costs probably in a way that uh, distorts how we should be providing services. And this is a challenge for our decade. Yeah. We have a little bit of time left. What would you like to leave people with? Um, I think, I guess what I want to emphasize is that um, we're all in it together. Um, we all end up paying um, as taxpayers for, um, for our health or lack of health. And so we pay personally, of course, yes, too. Yes, and personally. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm um, talking about if I can't walk up the stairs because I haven't exercised, that's yes, a price. Yes, um, definitely. So personally, and as um, as in a community, as a, as a state that we are, we are literally all in it together. And so, um, you know, being able to take it to heart on what is Stephanie going to do about my overall uh, well-being and how do I contribute uh, to to the to the community and um, just striving to create more partnerships and win-wins as we, um, we strive for that ultimate goal. Perfect. I think it's the only way we can succeed. So, Stephanie, I'd really like to thank you for coming today. Thank I you I appreciate for your enthusiasm and perspective and focus on health. So, with that, we'll close. Till next time, I okay. hope you're back. Uh, this is Craig Thomas, your host on Much More on Medicine, part of Think Tank Hawaii's uh, live stream series. Uh, thank you very much.